As the temperatures rise and summer is in full swing, you'll notice a lot more traffic along the Glacial Lake State Trail. And most of you know that the State Trail runs from Wilmer all the way up to Spicer and New London, but then it continues on all the way up to Richmond, Minnesota. There's going to be an expansion to the trail and it's going to create a loop. We're going to check in with Mel Odens from Canyon County and discuss that particular loop trail, find out where it's going to be and when we can expect to use it. Then we're going to go back to April where we're out at Prairie Woods Environmental Learning Center again and we were there for an Earth Day celebration. We'll check in with the folks there. Glad you're here. Stay tuned. This is Backroad Journal. The conversation started many years ago when the population density around Eagle Lake was wanting a place to safely walk and ride bikes. And they had, there was a, a large population, but they had no connection to, the, the only trail in the area was the Glacial Lakes Trail, and they had no connection to the city trails, a county trail, or the state trail. And so there's always been talk of, of adding a trail in this area. And then when the realignment of County Road 9 came to be, they also included a county trail along 26, County Road 26 to connect to Eagle Lake. But what it didn't do is it still didn't connect you to the city trail system. And so then there was a further discussion about maybe we should work with the city and the school and take it straight south to connect to the trailhead that we're standing at right here by the Civic Center. And so they applied for a federal grant and um, they, they were successful in getting it. And so actually what it is, is it's seven entities that came together, the city, the county, the federal government, and they at the same time applied for a state DNR grant to the local trail connections program. And then the townships all came together and funded this. most recent trail expansion that we're going to do is we're going to go from near the trailhead at the northern part of the high school, kitty corner across the high school property that's undeveloped, and then we're going to go northerly up to Eagle Lake and then um, jump to the east side of the road and then connect up to County Road 26. It's a two and a half mile, 10 foot multi-use path. And so it's going to be, it's going to start by the baseball fields and then work itself northeasterly across that school property over by the from the soccer fields and then north and northeast and then when it gets to county road nine it's going to go on the west side of county road nine just for a little bit and then it's it's and then it's going to go on to the eagle lake road or uh, it's going to be an entire off-road trail none of it's going to be on road and then we're, we're anticipating construction would start uh, late to into July and it would be completed by September 4th of this year. Um, some of the benefits that, that I like about the trail that we're completing here is that um, it's a six and a half mile loop where you can go a city trail system, a county trail system, over to a state trail system and back to the trailhead and it's a six and a half mile loop. So it's a nice, it's a nice run, it's a nice ride, and and you don't, you're not going by the same thing you went by before. It's new scenery the whole way, and it's all off road, and and it also I think will promote you know the the state trail use, and the state trail use now goes all the way from from Wilmer all the way up to Richmond. So it's a 36 mile trail system that used to 25 years ago went to Spicer, you know, and then and then New London, and then as it worked its way up north to Howick, Painesville, and now all the way up to Richmond. You know, I think the benefits that I would like to point out is number one, is it provides a safe off-road opportunity to go from the city trail system to the Eagle Lake system, you know, residents to the Glacial Lakes trail system. 100% off-road, safe travel. 
seven entities came together to make this possible. And um, it, it, it provides, um, it, it's in the spirit of the bike friendly community and it provides a safe trail that connects all, all three of these trail systems. And it, and it also has a nice uh, scenic loop is, is what I feel is the, the biggest benefit for this. We're hoping to create an environment where people feel comfortable um, learning about new topics and um, some, some of the topics may, um, people may think they don't know enough about, but um, here we try to invite everybody and have it really a comfortable situation to have conversations about everything from water to uh, what you guys are eating on your tables. Or, um, we even had some gals with yoga, you know, for fitness. And, you know, it's so, sort of trying to take into consideration the whole gamut of environmental health and, and physical health and just general well being here. And I think that's a big thing, you know, with Earth Day is that we take a step back and, and realize, you know, our, our actions ripple throughout, you know, our, our region, throughout our communities, and being able to keep that in mind especially during Earth Day, is going to serve us all well. Yep, right there, good. Give me the other foot. This is going to Right there, here we go. Cool, we're going to slide this up. Okay, you stand kind of back here? Yeah, way back here, so I don't want to run you over. All right, okay, so you can stand on one of these three lines, okay? Thanks, buddy. Have you ever climbed before? Yeah. All right, so you know how to come down? Yep. All right, good luck. Okay. Let's do it. All right, good job. Are you ready to come down? All right, here we go. We're gonna rappel down and try not to fall on yeah. anyone's head here. <laughs> Push your feet out. Yeah. Good job. Look for the green one to your right. There you go. Over there. There it is. There. That one. And what's your? How do you think this Earth Day was? It was good. It was a nice turnout. It was. Uh, didn't have a, a boom like a lot of years we get pretty congested but it was a nice steady flow throughout the day so that was it was good to good to see people still coming out and, um, with our you know, parking sometimes goes all the way out and over the ridge didn't have that today but still we had parking down to, by the shop so that was a good thing you gotta get it wet first and then you I've been watching it for a while now I know the order. Then all these white spots in your shirt will be all colorful and then it'll be like white spots in it. Where do we do we start down there or it doesn't really matter. Oh okay, so we'll just wait here. <laughs> do you have a shirt? Like Hannah and Louise and she tells you wherever there's a bite. That's that, that's gonna be um, where it's gonna be. <laughs> are you done? Mm. Are you sure you're done? You want me to flip it over so you can do the other side? Okay, I'm gonna help you. Can I get this shirt? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, Nicole mm -hmm. will do it for you. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for 12 years. How did you get into it? I actually got into it right out here at Prairie Woods. There's a, a guy named Dale Cannon out here demonstrating, and I got hooked right away. <laughs> So I asked them to teach me and I've been out here every year since. Kind of full circle for me out here at Prairie Woods. Right now I'm just eliminating some of the brittle flakes at the end, getting rid of the sharpness so that it'll absorb the impact a little bit better when I strike it. So I'm gonna be taking some more thinning flakes off of this surface. So now that I've got that platform strengthened, there's some areas here that I'll be striking to remove remove some of that mass. Another way to do it is to leave it over and do a double one and you'll hold it better. So you take that here and you, and you put it on this real thin and you wrap that around the body. And then you go part way up and then you wrap the uh, 
Yeah, right here. And you tie that on. And then you wrap some more over the abdomen. And then fold that over. That becomes the wing case. It's like a little back row. Was there a kind of a theme this year? Do you guys have a theme for Earth Day? Or? Yep. So this year it was soil, soil health, and water quality. So um, we had a presentation on uh, don't don't treat your soil like dirt, which I, I like that. It was good. Um, talked about a lot of interesting things around soil and, and conservation of soil and how um, tilling practices can be changed in order to conserve soil. What is the biggest concern coming from your organization within the Wilmer and Kanye County area? I think it's just a basic, um, you know, what, how people can impact or realize how they impact water quality and what they can do to help minimize their impact on it. Um, a lot of times we'll get people that say, I live on the lake, it's the lake people that are impacting or it's the farmers that are impacting. I always come back to say, everybody who lives in the watershed uses the water and impacts the water. So we all have to come together and figure out what we can do to help improve it. The Citizen Stream Monitoring Program or CSM is a state uh, program through the Pollution Control Agency that involves volunteers throughout the state taking samples. Um, a lot of times there's limited staff in our agencies and we can't assess the water everywhere. So we rely on volunteers to help us and they take um, a tea tube and fill it with water and they look to see how much basically um, sediment is in the water column. So if it's really cloudy, it's got a, a, a lower transparency. But if the tube is clear, then that means it's cleaner water and you can see further down into the water column. So it gives us a snapshot of what the water quality is like through our volunteers' eyes. And that data is then um, transferred to the state and that helps uh, our listings for water quality. Every year we try and look at different events that we can do um, to help engage people. And with Earth Day, it's a family fun event. And if you can engage your kids, but then also learn something as an adult, it's a win-win situation. And it's a lot of it comes down to having fun. You learn while you have fun. And there's so many different topics, so much information that's here and hands-on activities that you cannot walk away without learning something new. <laughs> For the Middle Fork Pro River Watershed District, we believe that Prairie Woods uh, Environmental Learning Center is a, a really great resource um, to have in the community. And any way that we can help out or any way that we can also promote ourselves um, is a great opportunity for us and a great opportunity for them as well to get some help from us. We do lots of different kind of projects, especially agriculture related. Um, that's really important to us, as well as shoreline practices. So oftentimes, uh, farmers will tile their fields, and what we like to promote is um, alternate tile intakes. So we want to slow down the water uh, to keep the nutrients on the land, um, as it doesn't get into our waters, into our drainage ditches, which lead to you know other rivers and other lakes. So, being right on the border of um, the deciduous hardwood ecoregion and the prairie ecoregion, we have a really unique situation, um, as in we have lots of agricultural land that's butting up against lots of lakes. So, ag versus recreational lakes, um, that's kind of a, our big concern and our, our big problem area. Um, and that's where we do a lot of our work is trying to still have this agriculture because um, it's it's such an important part to the you know to the area but as well as the lakes which are also very important so we're trying to do a good balance of managing both areas all the different venues here are great um, and Prairie Woods is awesome the, you know working with the community and getting all these different you know soil and water conservation districts and you know other partners that come and they help out and they had a, pa a pancake feed and it's just a lot of fun for everyone so anybody interested in the yoga session we're gonna having that up in the Westby in 10 minutes all right thank beginner you. yoga super <laughs> Now we're getting into the heart of it. It's looking pretty nice inside there. We do a lot of uh, agricultural BMPs. Um, 
kind of over here on the side. Um, just trying to slow the water down from draining off, you know, draining off the field. If we can slow it down, we have time for the nutrients to go out, the water to soak in. Um, filtering the water through wetlands is a great, great way to, uh, you know, kind of reduce flooding downstream and then also take the native plants or taking the excess nutrients out of the water before it you know, can drain into our drainage ditches or the river. Um, so we do a lot of projects like that. It's some, you know, some easy things. We also uh, establish a lot of buffers along our drainage ditches. So there's a 16 and a half foot buffer. So that's also helping um, the surface runoff. We'll have to go through that native grass before it enters the waterway as well. And that takes some nutrients and sediment out before it can get in. I mean, there's, there obvious is natural phosphorus in our soil um, that leaches out and goes into our um, surface water. Uh, there is a lot of agricultural land um, that drains and you, you do get that from, you know, just excess uh, nutrients being put on the field by fertilizer, manure um, that can run off going to the river. Um, and, you know, that's kind of our main area. We do have a couple of towns, um, which also, so you have a lot of the street runoff that goes, and that's piped directly into our river. So all those nutrients going in from Painesville goes into Rice Lake as well. You know, each year we try to make a little different topics. So we, you know, talking about water quality. This year we're talking about soil health. You know, it's all, it's all this, you know, it's all working together to make our environment better. So I think, yeah, I think it's a great event. And, you know, usually we have a lot of people out here and get, get them to talk and talk to different conservation groups and figure out things that they can do on, you know, if it's their farm, they live in town, their, their house, different things they can do to help them there. So what do you think about um, some of the, um, the things that have, have gone on here at Earth Day over the over the years that you've been here? What what can you say about that? How well, I think, I think just in the years it's been done, it used to be maybe only a couple subjects of let's concentrate on that type of discussion during conservation. This has gotten so much larger. You can just, even looking at the pictures and the multitudes of different practices practices that we do and what we've done through the 20 years or more of this Earth Day. And you know, the municipal utilities, I mean, it's a cross-section of even people representing whatever conservation niche they're in. I mean, it's that's another cool thing about this whole thing. It brings out a lot of different people. I mean, I've talked to people ever from South Dakota today, visiting their family. They heard it was up to so they all came with their family, grandkids from South there up. It was like, how cool is that? Uh, Yellow Medicine County, Redville County, I had people from Brainerd up here today talking already. You know, they look at you and they, well, we do this. Well, I didn't know you guys do this type of thing. So even they're amazed at some of the stuff that gets done between this partner and that's all in this room right now. So it's definitely they were reaching out to people yep. from all over the all over the game. That's, isn't that what it's about, Earth Day is reaching out?